inside a concert hall. A woman, about 30 to 35 years old, dressed in black, dress, semi-transparent tights and pumps on a small thick heel are in this color. The position of the right leg placed on the ground, on which the left hangs, prevails. Practically, only the right foot loses contact with the footwear for some time. DNA can also be obtained from the air. British scientists have shown for the first time that DNA released in the environment can be collected from air samples. This research may pave the way to better solutions in forensics, ecology or medicine. Every organism leaves a trace in the environment in which it arrives. These are scraps of stray genetic material that have been thrown out of the body into the environment in the form of particles of epidermis or hair, but also urine and other waste. To date, effective methods have been developed to obtain DNA from aquatic environments, which is used to determine what species inhabit a given reservoir. It has also been proven in numerous examples that you can obtain DNA from soil or snow, but no one has tried to obtain DNA from the air so far. This was achieved by British scientists from Queen Mary University in London. For the first time in history, they showed that DNA can also be extracted from air. The research, described in the journal, Peer J, may pave the way to better solutions in forensics, ecology and medicine. It is about the so-called environmental DNA, Edna, which can be isolated directly from soil, sediment, water or fecal samples. Now it turns out that also from air samples, living organisms such as plants and animals release DNA into their surrounding environment when they interact with it. In recent years, Edna has become an important tool to help scientists identify species found in different environments. However, most of the work so far has focused on collecting Edna from water. In a new study, scientists tested whether Edna could be extracted from air samples and could be used to identify specific species. The researchers first collected air samples from a room that housed sand-naked mollusks, Heterocephalus glaber, a social species of rodent that lives in underground colonies. They also took samples from the tunnels prepared for these animals, through which they moved, and then used existing techniques to check the DNA sequence in the sampled air. The research team has shown that naked mole DNA can be successfully detected in air samples. Scientists also found human DNA in the samples. Initially, they speculated that this could be due to contamination of the samples, but later it became clear that human genetic material was spreading in the environment where the rodents were kept. And given that humans were caring for the animals all along, the presence of our DNA is not already so surprising. The use of Edna has become a topic of growing interest in the scientific community, especially for researchers looking for effective and non-invasive ways to monitor biological environments. Here, we present the first published evidence showing that animal Edna can be collected from the air opening up further avenues for studying animal communities in hard-to-reach environments such as caves and burrows, said Dr. Elizabeth Clare, lead author of the paper. The collection and analysis of Edna for the study and management of plant and animal populations has gained momentum over the last decade to test whether DNA samples could be taken from the air. Claire and her colleagues used a vacuum cleaner-like device equipped with special filters similar to HEPA filters. With this device, they vacuumed the places where the sand mollusks had previously arrived, and extracted the sequencing material from the filters. For species identification, researchers compared the obtained sequences with reference sequences in the database. However, the technique used requires further refinement.
While it is evidently possible to collect DNA from the air of an enclosed room, it can prove difficult in the open. Nevertheless, the researchers believe the work has some promising potential applications in the future. Theoretically, scientists could go to hard-to-reach places, such as narrow caves, and identify the species that live there using air samples. What started as an attempt to see if this approach could be applied to ecological assessments has now become much broader, with potential applications in forensics, anthropology and even medicine. This technique could help us better understand the spread of airborne diseases such as COVID-19. At the moment, social distancing guidelines are based on physics and estimates of how far virus particles can travel. But with this technique we could actually test the air and gather real evidence to support such guidelines, Claire said. World Earth Day. What is a water footprint and how to reduce it? Earth Day is an international initiative aimed at promoting pro-ecological attitudes in society. The date of April 22nd has been an opportunity to reflect on the current situation of our planet for over 50 years. Every year, the celebration is accompanied by a keynote, which is devoted to a selected issue in the field of ecology and environmental protection. Thus, the organizers draw attention to the need to take urgent action to protect nature. Because, a green future is a prosperous future, and thus, the interest of both us and future generations. Almost every activity we do leaves a trace. In the context of the environment, the carbon footprint is most often mentioned, but the water footprint is no less important. What is it and how to limit it? Our water footprint includes both our direct and indirect water use. What is behind these concepts? To answer this question, we need to verify how we use water. We have heard many times that you should turn off the tap when brushing your teeth. This is an example of direct consumption. We have a direct influence on them and we can easily control the amount of water we use. Direct consumption is related to the activities we perform, e.g. washing, laundry, washing up, watering the garden. However, our use of water is not limited to activities performed in the kitchen, bathroom or garden. Every day we contribute to the consumption of large amounts of water when buying a variety of products, from the food we consume, paper, clothes, furniture, equipment to biofuels. In this way, we indirectly affect water resources around the world. When drinking coffee, do we use only as much water as is in the cup? Unfortunately not. Indirect water use means water used at all stages of its production. In the case of fruit and vegetables, this will be, for example, water necessary for plant vegetation. Rainwater and water used by farmers, fruit growers for irrigation of crops. In the case of processed products, water used in the entire production process must be added to this amount. Direct consumption accounts for only 3%. Global water footprint. The remaining 97% this is called indirect water consumption. There are three types of water footprint. The green water footprint measures the volume of rainwater that has been used by plants, e.g. during agricultural and forestry crops. The blue water footprint represents the volume of surface and groundwater used that has become part of the product and water that has evaporated into the atmosphere as a result of the product's manufacture. In practice, the blue water footprint is primarily associated with consumption in industry, processing, and also our domestic use of water. 
The gray water footprint is the volume of water that is needed to dilute the contaminants from the manufacturing process to at least the applicable quality standards. According to the creator of the concept of the water footprint, Professor Arian Y. Hoekstra, the interest in the water footprint stems from the fact that human impact on the environment can ultimately be linked to human consumption, and that problems such as water scarcity and pollution can be better understood and addressed by considering the totality of production and supply chains. The water footprint helps us understand why our limited freshwater resources are consumed and polluted. To reduce your water footprint, Try to limit both the direct and indirect use of this one of nature's most precious resources. You will reduce your direct water consumption by turning off the tap while brushing your teeth and washing your hands, taking a shower instead of a bath, remembering that when taking a shower, the water does not have to run all the time. By choosing water-saving household appliances, turning devices on only when they are full, but not overcrowded, if you wash traditionally by turning off the tap or using a bowl. Collecting rainwater e.g. for watering plants.